Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to join you today for this uh, web summit on female leadership in sport. And I wish to thank SIGA for inviting me to take part in this important meeting and providing me the opportunity to reflect on its theme. I think those of us participated today will agree. The leadership of women in sport can empower and inspire athletes and fans alike and is critical to increasing social inclusion in the sporting world. You see, the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, through its Division for Inclusive Social Development, which I have the privilege to lead, houses the substantive portfolio on sport for development and peace in the United Nations system. We are committed to the implementation of the United Nations Action Plan on Sport for Development and Peace and to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with its central promise to leave no one behind. And this cannot be done without the leadership of women. And indeed, our division has global mandates on a number of social groups that are too frequently underrepresented in leadership, including indigenous peoples, persons with disabilities, youth and older persons, and therefore when I speak about the leadership of women in sport, I'm thinking also of the critical role and voices of indigenous women, women with disabilities, and both older and young women. And though we know that much work remains, I believe the importance of women's leadership in this arena is increasingly recognized, for example, Last year, our division was tasked with preparing the report of the Secretary General focused on sport as a global accelerator of peace and sustainable development for all. And in providing inputs, member states, UN entities and other stakeholders shared with us more than 40 initiatives that included a focus on the fifth of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which calls for gender equality. And Additional relevant examples were provided by a number of member states in their 2020 voluntary national reviews regarding the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. But what does it mean to be a leader in sport? So here I wish to recognize the role of women and girls who lead as athletes, from those playing in local leagues to those who have risen to the heights of professional sport, or national teams and even international competitions. But there are also other ways to lead. And I speak now as a woman who has a physical disability and holds a leadership position directing the UN office in DESA with the substantive mandate on sport for development and peace. At this international level, I enjoy the opportunity to engage with other female leaders from member states to other UN entities and from other sectors. Leadership in sport can also involve national political leadership. For example, the role of Miss Kirsty Coventry, a former Olympic champion swimmer who now serves as a Zimbabwe's Minister of Sport. It involves leadership in media. And here I think of the example set by Miss Shishom Mobonu Izioki who I had the pleasure to meet virtually during a multi-stakeholder dialogue I organized in December 2020 on technology and sport. She also has a background as an athlete, was the first female soccer analyst on the Supersport Network, and is a leading sports journalist in Nigeria and founder of Akoni TV, which is an online storytelling platform to empower and teach women how to produce, edit, and write scripts for their own sports stories. See. Women also have critical leadership roles in both civil society and the private sector in relation to sport, as well as in the development of technology that advances the role of sport for development and peace, including assistive technology that enables all to participate in sport. And I have had the pleasure to meet, for example, Miss Annika Emeret, now a young woman who has played soccer from her earliest earliest childhood and who was gifted a bionic arm which she designed by Limitless Solutions and she has been sharing her story with the goal of helping others since she was in her fourth grade. Women are also taking leading roles in using sport as a platform to advocate 
for social justice. In the United Nations, uh, I have learned that here in the United States, for example, Native American Jordan Mary Brings the Three White Horses has used her role as a marathon runner to bring attention to the missing and murdered indigenous women's movement and to advocate for better and safer future for indigenous peoples and other marginalized uh, groups. And these are but some of the fields in which the leadership of women is so critical in sport. And I wish to conclude today by again thanking SIGA for organizing this event. The theme is especially close to my heart. And I wish to emphasize DESA's strong commitment to the achievement of inclusive development for all people of all ages and of all abilities, which requires the full participation and indeed leadership of women in the sporting world. I thank you so much.